Hi, hello everyone. Thanks for joining me again on this making of videos. This time I'm sharing uh, the Por Si No Te Vuelvo A Ver, a very beautiful song by Maria Grieber. Uh, maybe, or I, I assume uh, that most, if not all of you, are not familiar with Maria Grieber, and by this time you may have already no noticed that Grieber does not sound like a Mexican last name, and that's because that's uh, her her married uh, last name. Uh, her name was, in fact, uh, I, w I was about to say very Mexican, but in fact, it will, uh, as you know, we uh, we have a breed of uh, of the Spanish, given the the conquest of this territory. So uh, Maria Joaquina de la Portilla, that that is her name. Uh, but that's the name she never used. She was to everyone uh, Maria Grieber. So, but let's keep in mind that she was in fact a Mexican composer. And it is also very important to to take a couple of minutes to talk about uh, Maria Grieber, because as you may be aware, there is a good, a very good number of very famous songs that Maria created. And uh, there could be, there will be in this series of the music postcards, there will be a good number of compositions by her, because uh, for those who may have uh, read uh, the blog, the blog that is, uh, by the way, I have mentioned it before in other recordings, that blog is made mainly for the reading of Spanish speakers. So if you are proficient in Spanish, you may read the entry of the whole program about Maria Grieber. Uh, there are also some comments on the recording, more details on her life and her uh, composition style, uh, her biography, because, this, because it is very interesting that uh, she has a, she, she has, let's say, a, a, very, a, a very lucky life in a way and a very unfortunate one in another way. But what do I mean by this? Uh, she was, of course, a very gifted artist. Uh, uh, in her early days, uh, she she had the opportunity not not only of being part of a rich family, but also traveling and living in Europe to get to get her uh, to get her musical studies. She also was in contact uh, with Mr. Lehar, and uh, in fact. She, she she makes reference to a couple of uh, anecdotes around uh, her her studies with him, and how he helped her to create her own style. Right when she came back to Mexico, still part of a rich family, she gets married to an American, but then they are in the middle of the Mexican Revolution, and that's when when things start to mess up so she travels to the to the US she goes to live there while her husband remains in the country there are there is a number of years when his uh, husband does not uh, uh, go to the US so she basically lives alone and uh, her compositions were not very famous at the beginning her style is not something that called the attention and uh, she she uh, she created music for a good number of movies and uh, um, Hollywood, but the, still the recognition and the money did not arrive to her in the in the same amount of the of the work. There was much more much more work than money, so that's when things uh, wh that's where things were not good. Uh, I think I can recall one of the things she said when she mentioned that. The more famous she was, the poorer she was. And it's very unfortunate unfortunate that she even had to sell her own piano, the piano she used to create her compositions, because basically there was no no money to live uh, to 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 make a living there in the US. Fortunately things things by the let's say by, by the late phase of her life changed again. She meets a very famous tenor who then uh, started singing uh, Maria's Jurame, that is worldwide famous composition. I think it's the most famous from her. And that gives moment to, to other singers the, that uh, helps her g uh, get more recognition. And there are there is a good number of singers, some of them opera singers, who also embrace her songs. And she starts uh, receiving some prizes and uh, things things get better and she has a 
uh, a, a problem, a physical condition in her late years, and she ends up dying. Well, she used the, she by the by the end of her life was traveling between Mexico and the U.S. So when she dies, uh, uh, there there are there is a good number of singers and people who who give the of uh, their appreciation to her and her music. So unfortunately. Uh, once she passed, but her music remains, and uh, there is uh, after five, six, se almost seven decades after she left, that we still uh, love her music. And I also recall uh, going back to that entry in the blog that I was mentioning there that Maria Grivers, and there is also a note in there where I uh, share with you that for some people, and I agree. I agree with those uh, with those comments. Maria Grieber may be called uh, a Mexican leaderist in the sense that she wrote very fine music. That if we were to compare to a musical gender, besides being more in the style of the tango and the bolero, but her music is very intimate. There is one thing that I don't like currently, and that is that the compositions, there is uh, there are too many notes now that everybody wants to make a version of her music. Though there is a there is a lot more than she what she actually wrote. That is something that I really personally I don't like because uh, being, uh, now that I'm more familiar with her style, I noticed that she she went for the minimum of notes to express the most of the emotion. So it may sound a, a little contradictory, but that's the way it worked. Um, and now that gives me room to start talking about uh, Por Si No Te Vuelvo A Ver, and it comes to my surprise, and maybe a surprise to you, that this is in fact the last song that I learned from her. If you ask me a year ago, I didn't even know that this song existed. I have never heard it, so opposite to what we had done in the past, where we used to, or where I used to share with you, uh, by the way, you will see in the background the video that is uh, this time accompanying the music postcard, that is a view from the El Mirador del Faro, I will go get back to that one in a second, but before I go back to that one, I wanted to remain uh, on the comment that this is, I have to be sincere, this is a song that I didn't even know about here, and uh, that's why I was saying that contrary to what I have done in the past, there is no way I can tell you uh, uh, an anecdote of a singer, of a video, the first time that I saw it, the first time that I heard it, because in fact I had never heard it. The first contact that I had with her is that as I was looking for some scores, uh, I, know, I knew that I needed more scores uh, from Maria Grieber, so when I was digging into the internet trying to find something about her, that's when this song came up. So I, re I recall that I read it very quickly, it didn't really call, call much of my attention, and then I stored it in my hard drive and moved on for the music that I was uh, uh, in my active uh, search of what I was actually looking for. And that's where it remained for a good number of months. I, I didn't even remember exactly when I stored it. But what I recall is that about four months, it's almost four months if I remember well, I played a, a CD that I have from the Mexican tenor, Carlos uh, Montemayor, if I recall well his name. And I noticed that, in fact, the CD that I have had for, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 years already, uh, that this song was in there. So uh, not only when I saw the score, I didn't pay much attention, but when I saw it in the playlist of the CD, I told, my, I told myself, but I have had it for a good number of times. How is it that I never pay attention to it? Uh, I am to blame for that, for sure. So... Um, I recall that I opened, I went to the score back again, even before listening to to, to Carlos' uh, rendition of the song, and I remember that I read it, and uh, my first thoughts were, oh my God, this is a volcano, or well, I was looking for a word to try to explain it in English because uh, uh, this is a for, uh, what I uh, what I saw in the song is that this was a force of nature. This was, I'm not sure if I call it a tornado, a twister, a storm, or whatever I want to call it, because uh, behind this 
uh, in appearance very calm song in the <clears throat> sorry in a in a in a in a very intimate style of writing the music as i was just sharing that uh, defines what maria rivers does it felt only by uh, and only by reading it not even singing it on, only by reading it i, I felt a la, a la, this explosion of contained emotions that she had when she wrote it and i have been telling and asking myself how is it that uh, that a person in this case maria how is it that maria could give so much emotion and at the same time have it under control in this song it's uh it's uh as i was uh, just saying th this is such an explosion and so what i did later is that i played carlos uh, rendition and this time i am not able to share uh the music uh or that version as i did in the past because this time i am a hundred percent sure that it would violate copyright rights so we will i will not be sharing it and mm -hmm, if i am sincere i don't think there is a copy of it anywhere not even in youtube i don't think i have seen that at least not from carlos i'm sure that you will be able to find uh other versions uh, of this song by many singers but not the one that, at least the, the first one that I paid attention to. And uh, with uh, with all that in mind, and uh, before we go to the score uh, itself, I wanted to share that this time uh, we are looking at the, at the video that accompanies the song. And uh, as in the other videos, you are able to see that I share the map with the location of where you can actually of where the video was recorded and the, the advantage of this of this view is that this mirador is the lighthouse el mirador the lighthouse if we are to translate el faro it is not a very high point of reference i mean in altitude but as you can see the views are spectacular if you want to see Bayarta either in the morning, in the afternoon, or by the sunset. Please make sure that you stop by there. Uh, you don't need to play this uh, version of the Por si no te vuelvo a ver, pero, but if there is a song that you really, really, really love and want to take some 15 or 20 minutes looking at the ocean, looking at the red ceilings of the Puerto Vallarta houses, looking at the cath cathedral, and then going back to the sea, and uh, now that you can see a bird flying and you want to see the sky and uh, how the colors of the sky turn from or uh, turn from blue to a light yellow and then to an orange and sometimes even to red when the sun is going down i am pretty sure that you will love the view from this place <laughs> and uh, with all that being said i think we can have some minutes to go now to the score and let me put it on the screen so that we can all basically have the same view and uh, i think i am going to move uh, where you can see me on the camera because i am blocking a, a good part of the score so <clears throat> let's go uh let's go uh, re for it remember yeah you, <laughs> i know you're very aware of it i hardly ever translate everything again i am a lousy translator so please forgive me for that and there is some words uh that go uh, i insist very often when i speak about uh, maria griever that she has a way of writing that is that is very natural to the rhythm of how we actually speak Spanish. So if you speak Spanish, your voice would actually go in the same rhythm as in the song. No sé si el alejarme me enloquece y por eso habré venido por un último adiós. No sé si el alejarme me enloquece y por eso habré venido por un último adiós. Yo no quiero con ello entristecerte, pues sé que es un martirio para los dos. Obse uh, please notice that both in adiós and, lo and para los dos, you go from this good number of notes and then you slow down to, to end the phrase, because uh, the, the phrase of what you're actually saying or singing is not exactly the same phrase as the music. Uh, well, the, the music accompanies the voice, of course. But I wa what I want to make you notice is that the measure does not match exactly the ending of the 
of the voice. But it is, and it is very interesting because it is very natural to how we speak Spanish. No sé si al alejarme me enloquece y por eso habré venido por un último adiós. Yo no quiero con ello entristecerte, pues sé que es un martirio para los dos. He venido a decirte únicamente que aunque viva muy lejos, jamás te olvidaré. If you notice by, by the tone of my voice, uh, I speak, uh, I start by saying a phrase like, I don't know. I don't know if by going far away, that's what's driving me crazy, and that's the reason for me to coming to say you, to tell you goodbye. I don't want to make you sad because of that, because I know that it makes uh, both of us feel bad. And it's basically a phrase, you're sharing your emotion now, but it is more like, well, that's the conclusion. But then it changes, and it says, He venido a decirte únicamente que aunque viva muy lejos, jamás te olvidaré. Then it comes, and even though there is no notes on the dynamics of the music, that for those who speak Spanish know that now the intention has changed. Now you go to an affirmative, a more firm uh, phrase that says, He venido a decirte únicamente que aunque viva muy lejos, jamás te olvidaré. It's like uh, you are now standing in front of her, and you're telling her, that you have come here just to let her know that even if you go very far away, you will never forget her. Then again, I repeat, you start telling that you don't want to make her sad and that, that, that. But then you go like, you have her in front of you and you tell her, I am here right in front of you just to tell you that even if I am far away, I will never forget you. Que tu imagen se ha grabado en mi mente y que a cual hostia, hostia santa te adoraré. It goes then again, like her, the image of hers is now deep in his mind and then it makes a, a religious reference. It, it is very common in, in, in music, in particular for Mexican music, that you make reference to some, uh, some saint. Uh, either items or, or things that belong to, to your religious credo, so that's what he makes the mention to. Then, uh, and he, she also gives us the note that it is uh, ralentando molto. Que tu imagen se ha grabado en mi mente y que a cual hostia santa te adoraré. And then, look, look at how... Uh, my, my first reading of the score was with lots of intention, like... Tú, la de los ojazos negros, la de boca tan bonita, la de tan chiquito pie. Tú, la que eres tan orgullosa por saber que eres hermosa, no me dejes de querer. Tú, with much more power, la que al hablar tiene el dejo de la tierra que me alejo para quizás no volver. And these three times that you say tú, tú, tú. Let me maybe zoom out a little that, so that we can have the, three, the view of the three twos. You say, tú, la de los ojazos negros, la de boca tan, tan bonita, la de tan chiquito pie. Tú, la que eres tan orgullosa por saber que eres hermosa, no me dejes de querer. And the, and the stronger, tú, la que al hablar tiene el dejo de la tierra que me alejo para quizás no volver. Besides the extraordinary, extraordinary rhythm, and the, the full sense that makes this expression, and uh, the, there is a rhyme there in Spanish, at least with Dejo de la tierra que me alejo para quizás no volver. I was telling you that my first thought is that you, you gave full power. In fact, I am pretty sure that what I recorded at the La Isla del Cual in, in those days of the entry of the blog, I... I remember that the emotion carried me away, and I remember that I sang it uh, very loud, even though I had also already thought that it had to be very intimate and pianissimo. But now, this time, as I was rehearsing it, I told myself that, in fact, it has to be like very, very, uh, the, the sense of intimate and piano, like, Tú, la de los ojazos negros, la de boca tan bonita, La de tan chiquito pie, tú, la que eres tan orgullosa por saber que eres hermosa, no me dejes de querer. 
tú la que al hablar tiene el dejo de la tierra que me alejo para quizás no volver and of course uh, with a with the voice better placed but what I what I what, I, what I'm trying to do now is to illustrate how I the, at the end decided to make it this first two to the first tula de los ojazos and the tula de la que eres tan orgullosa I chose to go soft in piano and in forte in the last two because also we uh, we make uh, or we take advantage of the natural rhyme uh, in Spanish of the phrase la que al hablar tiene el dejo de la tierra que me alejo para quizás no volver and the way it wraps up the music deja que con ilusión loca this uh, this phrase is absolutely amazing in Spanish also as well Please let that this crazy, that f this full illusion that I give you or I kiss your mouth just in case I shall never see you again. It is like excuse, right? And that's what I was telling you, that this is like a volcano. You start from sharing your first impressions of that you don't want to make her sad. Then you go to like you're in front of her and telling that you will never forget her. Then you go for a moment slow and you are giving the details of the two, la de la, de la boca, and two, then again with soft. And then you go hard again, like tu la que... Uh, let me go back so that I don't mess up with the words. Tú, la que al hablar tiene el dejo de la tierra que me alejo. You went strong again in forte. And then you start slowing down, slowing down. Deja que con ilusión loca te dé un beso en esa boca. Excuse, por si no te vuelvo a ver. Which is the phrase that gives name to this song. Just in case, I shall never see you again. And if I shall never see you again, I will... Uh, make the best of this moment and I will give you a kiss in the mouth. That's what Maria Grieber shares with, shared with us. I hope that you enjoyed this video the same way I enjoyed working on this song. And I hope to see you some other time soon. And bye-bye.